Well, you're not done. You, with you're welcome yes. to come back. You're welcome to come back anytime. Yeah, but you can't leave yet. Oh. Actually, he's the next item. He's I am. Back. Oh, okay. And I, I should probably apologize in advance. So, this is dealing with another industrial revenue bond uh, issue, and this is this is really not asking for a resolution or anything at this point. Rather, to to provide you information on a. Uh, I think a complex situation um, that has arisen. Um, so I'll give you a little bit of back history and then I'll jump to the end and see what you want to know <laughs> about the middle because it's it gets relatively complex. But why don't you tell them where we want to end the, uh, in, in kind of uh, making them whole? Correct. Tax. Yep. So. Uh, the parties involved are Curtis Levine, Cornerstone Warehousing, and, and this is uh, related to the to the former Dillon site, now now home to Hugo's Industrial Supply. So um, Curtis, back in uh, it was granted for tax year 2010 when he acquired that property, was given a 10-year EDX abatement um, that locked in the value of the property at that pre-start level and then gave him a 10-year a, a 100% abatement if he met his job creation numbers. Um, so he did that, um, actually had to make payment in lieu of tax uh, for, for the full amount per the agreement for tax years 2012-2013 uh, because the job creation um, was not met. Then in 2013, uh, there was a lease to purchase arrangement entered into between uh, Cornerstone and Calcor, which is the, the ownership of the property for Hugo's Industrial Supply. Um, and they negotiated that, that arrangement with the assumption that the, the abatement was in place because the Hugo's uh, job creation was exceeding what, what the Levine job creation requirement per the inducement was, that that would go back into effect for the remainder of that term, which is through tax year 2019. Um, it, it basically was an oversight that under an EDX you cannot lease to an unrelated entity and still qualify for that tax abatement. So the county then in 2014 charged the full pilot payment um, that was due and then in tax years 2015 and this tax year uh, once the uh, mill levies are set the full taxes will be paid. So, um, so we, essentially, we've created an issue where the terms under which the the purchase of the or the transfer of the property was happening changed via oversight that the abatement went away. So, uh, Curtis Levine has had to pay the taxes on that after the two that the two years that were due because of the non-job creation uh, for tax years 14, 15, 16. There's been $138,553.15 paid, and that's on a 2016 estimate since we don't know what the mill levy will be yet. So what the IRB issue for this would do is recreate those original terms, giving the abatement as anticipated through 2019 uh, to Corey if he goes ahead and purchases the property. And then in tax years 2020, 2021, 22 would offer future tax benefits equal to the benefits that Curtis had to pay when Corey was more than, than meeting the job creation requirements. Um, the job creation requirement was 10. Corey's regularly had 15 to 17 staff at that facility um, since then. So, um, so long and short of it, um, you know, like I said, jumping to the end, under the, the spreadsheet you've got, the, the original abatement that was granted to Cornerstone would have created 10 jobs a year, um, and through 2028, um, using estimations for future years, uh, the taxing entities would have collected $522,500. Under this proposal, which allows Corey to pay back Curtis, the, the taxes that were paid when Corey occupied the facility, um, the taxing entities would receive $541,964, um, or actually just under $20,000 more than original. Yeah. Now, year by year, we've, we've structured it and calculated it all out. I, I tried to color code it. If you have questions, I can kind of show you where those numbers come from, but 
but basically through 2019, we'd be looking at the 100% abatement, which was the previous agreement, and then extending those for the next three years so that Corey, through their new negotiated prices, reimbursing Curtis for those taxes he paid when Corey was exceeding the job creation in the facility under Curtis's ownership. It was caused by an error wow. on his part, but uh, you know this is one of the pivotal entrepreneurs that we've had in our community with one of the other newer uh, entrepreneurs, and all we're trying to do is just make reestablish the same benefit that uh, he was going to get originally. Yeah. So they're they're good with. Yes, I mean they've, yeah. they've approved this and. Yeah, and uh, Gilmore Bell, um, we've communicated yeah. with them, and they basically instructed us if they can agree on a term um, and, and sort of what tax scenario needs to happen to make their terms agreeable, then then they can draft the the appropriate documents to make it work. So. Actually, what happened is uh, it was done, the lease was done without getting with a, a bond attorney and making sure that it was going to be done appropriately. But there's a, there was a constitutional provision that uh, uh, that would not allow that EDX to go forward if you lease the property, and they didn't know that. So all we're trying to do is make uh, them whole. Yeah. And to further throw a twist into it, um, when, when Can well, we go back when, to the beverage cart yeah. discussion? Yeah, yeah. No, when when Corey Maybe first uh, occupied the facility in 2013, the appraised value of that building was 598,260. Um, in 14, with those completions done and his full occupancy, it went to 1,203,910. Now you can't apply for neighborhood revitalization if something's already being abated. But with the abatement thrown out after that fact, where Corey missed the opportunity to, to apply for the, for the abatement through the revitalization district that was in place, you know, you've got not only Curtis paying tax, but then, you know, if this isn't approved, you've got, because of that, you know, the revitalization district that could have been taken advantage of wasn't uh, because under, at that time, the abatement was in place and hadn't been ruled out yet. So you further got that little twist in there that, you know, could have come into play when, you, when you're talking about the value more than doubling. So um, with his ownership or his occupancy and renovation of the property. So. so it looks to me like they won't pay any property taxes in 17, 18, or 19. Correct. And that That's was, and those were the original terms. Right. That that they had agreed upon, and then they go to the full hit in twenty twenty, then the fifty eight thousand, yeah, and then twenty twenty is full. No, twenty twenty is is granting additional benefit that basically, if you look that one thirty eight in orange, mm -hmm. that's the three year tax that that Curtis paid when mm -hmm. Corey occupied and exceeded the 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 uh, employee requirements. And that's in two in blue. You're extending for 2020, 21, 22. You're extending that same amount of benefit to future years for Hugo's because Hugo's in turn is basically through their negotiated price upping the amount that he's paying Curtis. So, so that, it's giving Curtis back what he paid that was unanticipated and due to oversight when the job creation requirement was actually being met. That's that's how the not, money's not giving him any incentive for the two years that he didn't. Correct. Yeah, you, the the fifty thousand that was paid because the job creation was not met by himself and, and Hugo's wasn't involved in the property that was paid per per the inducement agreement as it should have been. So, so that's for twenty twenty one and twenty two for that. Correct. So those years, so the full the full hit comes on in two thousand twenty three. Yeah, the total, yeah, 2023. There still would be a yeah. pilot payment in 2022 of about 24000 Now, all of these numbers will also change as mill levies change and everything. So the, basically, if, if, if you approve this, it would, it would abate all the taxes for 17, 18, 19, and then it would be, you would look at what's, what's the appraised value and the current mill levy rate, and then he would make a pilot payment for all taxes due above 54, 175 in 2020. So if the mill levy adjusts 
higher, as yeah. we think it, it most likely is, as things stand today. There could be some tax generation in those years. Um, but working with what we know right now, I just had to estimate 180 mills for those future years. So, you know, we, we, know, the, <laughs> we know the appraisal for 16, but we don't know yet what the mill levy is going to be. So this is our best estimate. But with the pilot payment, the way you can structure that with the industrial revenue bond, you can, you can cap or you can say, you can base it on what actual taxes are and a certain amount of benefit. And I would leave that to the bond attorneys to, to settle up. So are you just reporting on it tonight and then it's gonna come back as a resolution? Yeah, depending on what, what more you all wanna see or questions you have or if the bond attorneys need to, if Gilmore Bell needs to take a look at it. Have, um, they, have they looked at this and approved it? We've been working under their Yeah, uh, under their guidance. Direction. And um, so the first step was um, um, Hugo's and Cornerstone had to agree on an acquisition price and put a contract in place, which they've done. And, and basically that just assumes the quarry gets a future value of 138 and, you know, that net present value is going to be transferred to Curtis for what he paid when Corey was meeting the, the wage threshold or the employment threshold for him on those three years. And so we just need to wait for it to come back to us. Yeah. Yeah. If preliminarily, yeah, if if you if you're semi agreeable to it, then it can go back yeah. to to Gilmore and Bell to review, and I'm sure they'll. Well, I think there's been a real effort to be fair in it. Yeah. So I I think it's a good good attempt. Yeah. I mean, at the end of the day, ten jobs were required, and you know, if Hugo's in it on a property that doubled in value and fifty percent more jobs, so. Yeah, Good deal. They certainly met their commitment. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. Thank you, Aaron. That's it. Thank you all. Good luck, Aaron. Thanks, Thanks. Aaron. We'll miss you, man. You too. Okay. Woo. R, report on sales tax received. Hmm. There's not much to say. Just we got the latest numbers, 167000 for the current mm -hmm. month. So. A little bit of a drop. Mm -hmm. It's a little drop year over year, but overall it's kind of hanging in there, so. Let's see. Any questions, Fred or Leonard? Yeah. No. All right. S, report on city board minutes. Any questions no about those questions. <clears throat> no. Fred? No. All right. Anything else? Well, I was going to ask about the status of Penn and Laurel do. Oh, that the uh, uh, environmental company has been down and they're evaluating the, the results now. Their borings? Yes, the borings. <laughs> so we should have a report soon. New Wallace coming pretty quick. Yes, and they're supposed to have it done by then. And, and the repairs that they've done, we've advised them, are totally inadequate. So they're, the, they're not good? No. And uh, I've advised and, and the what engineers looked at, in? even down the, at, at your, yeah. by your place, mm -hmm. it's, it's infected even that. That's what I And wondered. I think that's what the borings will substantiate. Mm -hmm. okay. A million gallons of water running under the pavement, it is going to do extensive damage so okay anything else Lenny? that was i just get asked that yeah every day at the donut shop <laughs> fred <laughs> any questions from the donut shop even when it's moved now Leonard, you still get it because the questions follow there oh, yeah. I see. you could the go through shop. the drive through to avoid the question <laughs> <laughs> If you wanted to, you could use the drive. Yeah. Not the same ambiance. <laughs> All right. Oh, you buy? No. I didn't know. What time? Uh, Move we adjourn? Second. All in favor? Oh, bye. bye. All right. Thanks, everyone. Okay. Note the end time. Holy smokes.